Welcome back to another weekly episode, guys. So now that the general election is over, the volatility played out. It, sh- it shook out a lot of short-term players in the market, more so in the derivative segment. And now we are again starting to see, you know, markets performing really well in line with uh, what was going on before the general elections. So in the last update that I had, I'd mentioned that the market is divided into two segments. The first segment is the strength pocket of the market, which is CPSE, PSC, PSU Bank, Railways, Defense, Manufacturing, MNC. All these pockets heading into general elections had strengthened further. And then there were pockets like banks, IT, uh, you know, financial services, private sector spaces, uh, even something like um, energy. They were all weakening before the event. And there's something similar that is going on today. It is just that in the next 12 months, you'll require a little bit different approach in the market, an approach that that as an investor you have to take and as a trader that you have to take. The election volatility showed that trading cannot be 100% of your entire account size. You have to divide your money between investments and trading. The ratio that I follow is somewhere close to 60-65% as investment, whereas 30-35% at times 40% for trading. Now on the election day when the volatility was playing out, if you cut your trading positions, that was the right move. But if you touched your investments, then that was a huge mistake and you have to learn this, that volatility and portfolio go hand in hand. There are periods where portfolio will fluctuate, but you need to be with your portfolio if you want to make wealth over a period of time. Now, if you look at the this particular video, it's all about ratio charts. For those of you who don't know about ratio charts, I leave a link towards the you know right top end corner of the screen. Also in the comment section, go through my relative strength videos. But just to give you a brief overview, Ratio chart is nothing but the chart of index divided by the benchmark Nifty 50 index. So if you see here, I've opened the chart of Nifty Bank. This is Nifty Bank divided by Nifty 50 and you get a ratio of it. Basically, it is a relative strength chart. And through this particular chart, I'll show you what the market is telling you and what should be your approach in days to come. So I have grouped this, uh, the charts into two segments. One, SIP and investment segment, and second, momentum trading segment, all right? If you have any doubts or you want to connect with me, you will have to connect with me on uh, Instagram. I'll leave my link in the comment section below. Just for a couple of weeks, I would like to answer some specific questions only on Instagram. My DM is open. You can, of course, ask your questions there. Just give me a couple of days to respond. I do take my time responding to queries mainly on those platforms because I don't, I'm not uh, an online kind of a person. I'm not online 24 seven. So the first sector I've opened is Nifty Bank followed by Nifty IT, FMCG, financial services, private sector banks, and to some extent metal and commodities also. These, These six, seven sectors I'll take up first. So Nifty Bank, what do you see in Nifty Bank? This fall that you see is a ratio breakdown in Nifty Bank that happened post COVID. If you look at what Nifty Bank has done since then, at best, it has moved along with Nifty. I would also tell you Nifty Bank over the last three years has net net underperformed Nifty. And there is an interesting pattern here. Whenever you see ratio line of Nifty Bank rising, you know, and strong momentum coming in the broader market also, that usually becomes the swing top in the market. So Nifty Bank was was able to identify a swing top in Feb 21 and all these subsequent tops that you see. Uh, the recent being in May 2023, when, you know, markets again started correcting after the, after the wonderful move that played out between March and March, April, May. And now you're seeing Nifty Bank is again struggling. Now, If you look at the time before COVID, overall Nifty Bank always used to outperform Nifty. And that is why Nifty Bank became such a popular index in the Indian stock market. But post COVID, it is not a coincidence now that for so many years, almost three and a half, four years, Nifty Bank is unable to sustain any kind of outperformance. 
I'll come to this part at a later stage. But watch out, heading into the next couple of quarters, if you see ratio line of Nifty Bank again rallying to 2.3, 2.4, that would again become a swing top in the market. The next chart is Nifty IT. So what is the best approach? I'll just give you the best approach for banks here. Whenever you see ratio chart of prominent sectors struggling, that is a SIP kind of a sector. It is not a momentum sector. So Nifty Bank currently is more suited for SIP, STP, that is systematic trading plan, and long-term ETF strategies. It is not a momentum kind of a sector where you can go in, make quick 20, 30, 40% and get out. The next sector again is Nifty IT. So Nifty IT has been a huge rank out performer since 2017, 2018 more so, where you can see the ratio charts just went through the roof mainly because it was COVID, IT sector did well. But since then, IT sector has struggled. And you, and you hear all this uh, you know, analysis around IT sector, that this is a sector to be in, it's gonna perform well over the next few years. I disagree with that. I think IT sector still has a lot of way to cover in terms of becoming a rank out performer sector. I'll tell you which sector I think are going to be rank out performers. I'll come to that in a bit. Just as recently you can see in the month of May, we have had a ratio chart breakdown in IT sector. This is a clear indication that bulk of money in Indian market is not chasing IT stocks. All right. Again, what kind of a sector this is? This is a SIP, STP kind of a sector that will take its own sweet time and will reward over a period of time. Something, it is in something like this phase, you know, this phase where a breakdown happens, next couple of quarters, price keeps consolidating, then one fine year price starts moving up. So again, it is a slow, gradual accumulation kind of a sector. The next space is FMCG. Now FMCG consumption are set to do well in the next few years. You can see there has been some kind of movement in ratio charts also, but still the Philip is missing. The momentum kind of a play is missing, especially the, the 96 phase or if you were in this market post 2010, this was a FMCG driven rally. I don't see that kind of rally developing anytime soon, but over the next two, three years, yes, FMCG consumption will become rank outperforming sectors. But again, what kind of a sector this is? This is a SIP, STP investment ETF kind of a sector where you deploy little long-term strategies. Financial service, same remarks that I made for Nifty Bank. After COVID, it has struggled. In fact, it is at a new low, relative strength low, when you take into consideration the COVID year. So it again becomes a SIP, STP kind of a ETF kind of a sector because currently there, is, there are only few pockets that are doing really well here, mainly the broking, the asset management companies, then CDSL, CAMS, those kind of play. Those kind of uh, themes are working in this sector, but overall the sector Philip is missing. Now, one of the reasons why Nifty Bank is struggling is because of private sector banks. And you can clearly see since 2004, five private sector banks had enjoyed maximum amount of participation from traders and maximum valuation support also. P's were expanding, balance sheets were growing, FIIs were chasing this sector. And you can look at the kind of relative strength, uh, relative strength outperformer performance that was there in this particular space. And now again, you're seeing the struggle playing out. And this is one of the reasons why Bank Nifty is just not able to move for one Second, I'll switch the charts to PSU Bank. Now, PSU Bank relative strength outperformance has been fantastic in the last two, three years. But look at where relative strength of PSU Bank is with respect to the highs that we saw in 2010. This tells you that in the next few years, bulk of the lifting of Nifty Bank is going to come on back of PSU Banks. This also tells you that currently, based on ratio charts, PSU banks are just not over-owned. Whatever price movement you're, you're seeing in those stocks where PEs are still between 8 to 13, just look at the scope of appreciation that can, that can come in PSU banks. 
So within the banking space, while I will mark the entire banking space as a SIP, STP, ETF kind of a space, PSU banks in particular can be identified for momentum plays also. And you don't need to be a genius stock picker here. Stick with three of the top names in PSU banks based on market capitalization. I think that would be SBI, PNB, BOB, if I'm not wrong. And I think if you keep these three stocks on your radar, periodically you will get fantastic trading related moves here. So now let's come to those pockets where momentum is still present and traders can participate. So Nifty Bank, IT, FMCG, financial services, something like private sector banks are all SIP, STP, ETF plays. Now comes the momentum part. The first I'll open up is Nifty, I, Nifty Auto. Look at the RS chart of Nifty Auto. It is, it is heading one way on the upside. Even after the recent volatility that played out, which were the auto sector stocks that began to move from the Nifty 200 space? It was Bajaj Auto, Hero Motocop, TVS Motors, m and &M. These are the four main stocks that again started breaking out, taking out the election volatility high. And this is, this is clearly evident in how relative strength line with respect to Nifty 50 for auto sector is shaping up one way direction. This was a phase that came in 2009 and lasted till about 2016. That is about six years auto sector was outperforming. And the recent bit of outperformance has started in, in something like uh, June 2022. And currently it is about two years since this auto space is heading higher. It's getting a bit crowded, so you cannot commit a lot of long-term money here. But there is definitely scope of momentum kind of moves happening in this particular sector. So I will mark this out as a momentum play. In June 2022 or July 2022, I had done a video on Open Channel where I, where I disclosed that I had put 30% of my capital in auto sector. It was actually because long-term ratio charts were beautiful uh, structure-wise and they were breaking out. Currently, I'll tell you that there are some auto sector stocks that I'm slowly uh, exiting that is selling on strength and I'll, and I'll see whether in the next couple of quarters I can get those stocks at a relatively lower price. Else, it's okay. You cannot capture everything in the market. The CPSC space is a, is a buzzing space and you know it has not yet hit the relative strength high of 2014, I still feel there is a lot of movement that is going to come in this particular space. This will be a great space to be in from momentum trading point of view also, or if you're a pure relative strength trader, or you use some ranking based system to trade, I think this particular space will still reward you. The way to participate in CPSE is wait for days when the market falls 3, 4, 5, 7% and then get it. These are beautiful structures that work out. But I do feel that in the next few years also, this space is going to deliver really good returns. Infra. Infra again is a momentum play. Why? Because it is waking up after a period of 10 years. See, there was a time, I don't know how many of you were there in the market in the 2003-2008 cycle. Infra was heading in one direction, that is one way up. This is where the likes of Unitech, the, the likes of uh, LNT, all those stocks had just gone through the roof and then came a lull of more than 10 years. This is a, this is a rounding base that is getting created in infrastructure space. And, you know, market was looking for continuity of current government, the current team, mainly because they are giving a lot of push towards manufacturing and infrastructure. And I think this theme is here to stay. There will be periods of volatility because no longer are we uh, in a in a you know majority kind of a government. We are in a coalition setup, so so there will be a lot of news flow. There will be news flow in between about the government falling and those kind of things. So that will bring about a lot of volatility in infra, defense, railway, CPSC, PSC. All these spaces will be volatile. But volatility equals opportunity. Always remember this. The sector that I feel is going to be a massive outperformer is the metal space, metal and commodities. These two uh, sectors I'll, I'll pick up, more so metals. 
See, metals uh, in commodities also, gold is there, silver is there. They're all set to do very well in the next few years. It's just that you'll have to weather out some volatility, have a systematic approach, not get shaken out whenever periods come where these assets underperform. Coming to metal space, I think metals has gone through a consolidation of more than 10 odd years. And on every dip, I think this space will give you excellent risk and reward. It's going to be an excellent uh, space uh, when it comes to momentum kind of trades also. So I'll definitely have uh, this particular sector on my radar. Every time there is a dip, you know, try and look at some stocks in, in this particular sector. There are a handful of good stocks, about six, seven stocks are there that are absolutely brilliant. Something like Tata Steel, JSW Steel, JSL, uh, you have uh, Jindal Steel in power. Uh, I also think Adani Enterprises is listed within the metal space. So you can look at that counter also. It's, it's, it's excellent when it comes to uh, momentum. Uh, you have a lot of uh, volatility in this space. So entry opportunities always exist. I won't repeat commodities because I've already covered it. I'll come to consumption. Now consumption and FMCG. See, in my view, rural spending is going to pick up in the next 12 to... 24 months. Now it is a bit difficult to identify when that spending starts picking up but if you look at the data, spending data that is, if you look at the footfalls in, in retail stores, you go to something like Reliance Mart, uh, I don't know whether it's called Reliance Mart or Geo Mart or D Mart, you'll come to know in tier 3, tier 4, tier 2 cities, you know, there there, there is some sort of rush in these stores that you can again start to identify and typically once this happens three to four quarters down the line you start seeing these companies performing very well you look at Marico, Britannia, Nestle, ITC, Hindustan, Unilever uh, in this particular quarter most of these stocks have gapped up and now are consolidating so that is that gap is actually a sign that something is changing in the sector and you and you gotta see whether that gap gets filled or not See, whenever a sector is in a turnaround, many a times you will see that the stock will gap up in that particular quarter based on good earnings and then that gap does not get filled. Whenever you identify those names, such names usually start doing very well in, in the next many quarters. The immediate quarter will see shakeout, a lot of weaker hands will get out and then comes the real rally. So keep these spaces uh, uh, in your in your mind, in your SIPs, STPs, because these are very different kind of sectors. They don't give you momentum kind of play, but over time they make you fantastic returns. Now, next sector that I'll pull up is Nifty PSU. So PSU Bank remarks I've already made, but the previous relative strength highs were something like uh, 0.7 and 0.845. The relevance of previous highs is important that is ratio chart highs because it tells you how that particular sector has struggled over the past many years how it is forming a new base and whether that base can make that sector a real rank out outperformer in the next few years so i definitely feel that the that the psu bank space will be volatile but overall trajectory of psu banks is on the upside private sector banks will still continue to struggle the next space is the energy space. Now, I particularly don't track this particular space that closely because it is it is something I don't understand. And Nifty Energy also has a lot of, uh, uh, you know, distorted weight distribution. Reliance occupies a lot of weight in that, along with a couple of uh, oil marketing, petroleum companies also. So I won't comment a lot on this particular sector because I don't understand, but clearly, this sector is attempting to become a long-term outperformer. Next is healthcare and pharma. Again, healthcare and pharma are two different spaces as defined by National Stock Exchange of India. I think leaving aside pharma, you should focus on healthcare. In healthcare, hospitals, diagnostics, specialized hospitals like, you know, Narayana, Hridayale, or there are many others, other spaces, uh, Shelby, Apollo hospitals and, and, and many other spaces, are, companies are there in this particular subsector. 
So healthcare, you have to look into it because uh, after 23, you've had a vertical move. Now you're consolidating in terms of relative strength performance. Pretty soon, this is going to break out on the upside and a lot of these companies will start doing well. One sector that you should definitely have for momentum is Nifty India Manufacturing Index. Take a look at which stocks are in this space. Every time the market falls, nibble into this particular space. Again, a systematic approach may work, but I think one time scale in, pyramid scale in will be really, really handy in this particular sector. Another space is realty. You look at where realty was in 2008, 2007. It was at a ratio of 0.2. Currently, it's a ratio of 0.04 because the sector has struggled so much in the last 15 years. RERA came into existence just a few years back, I think just before COVID. And since then, the sector has started doing well. If you look at the recent performance, this is fantastic outperformance from the realty space. And this is here to stay, guys, for the next many, many years. You look at what is happening in the NRC region. Uh, you look at what is happening in and around uh, something like Maharashtra, in and around Bengaluru. Uh, real estate prices are through the roof. And because it is relatively easy for people to op obtain loans from banks, property prices are not going to come down so easily. Demand for luxury properties is going up. So how do you narrow down this particular space? If you want to go to a safer route and a company that is the leader in this space, then there is only one name, which is the market leader DLF. Else there are a lot of smaller names that give you luxury properties. And one more hint I'll give you. Look into those builders who are providing luxury independent villas, especially outskirts of the city, you know, near mountains, near nature, waterfall, water streams, those kind of things. This theme is going to be big in the next 10 years. And I, of course, reserve the right to be wrong. But that is my understanding of where Indian consumer is shifting towards. Everything is getting premium oriented. You walk into a hero store, a TVS motor store, uh, Aisha Motors Enfield store and you would see that bikes that are priced in the higher range is attracting maximum query that is from customers. No longer are people interested in the 4 to 12 lakh car segment. They are more interested towards premium products. So this is a consumption trend that is going on in India and it's not going to change anytime soon. The next space is Nifty Digital. Now, again, there are a handful of companies here, but Nifty Digital, post-COVID, there's been a massive movement in the sector. It has corrected the returns that it gave, initial returns, and now the relative strength is again consolidating. There are a couple of stocks that are setting up right away in the Nifty Digital uh, index as defined by National Stock Exchange of India. So definitely look into it. The next space I'll talk about is Nifty MNC. Now, when this comes, ABB, Siemens, a lot of companies come in this particular sector. But look into this. Look into this because the kind of relative strength movement that has happened in this space suggests that there is more upside pending in this particular sector. Again, how to participate in it? If you're a momentum trader, you just go behind those stocks that, are, that have the highest relative strength. And then after you enter, you can manage your risk. But if you're a long-term player who believes in structural story of this particular space, then again, SIP, STP is a wonderful way to do it. So now I'll just open a couple of more charts, one of Nifty 500 and another one of S&P 500. And I'll speak about what you can expect from the market in the next couple of quarters. So the first chart that I have is Nifty 500. And as I flip this, this is S&P 500. Both are set at the same date, that is February 5, 2021. This is a weekly time frame chart. See, there's one thing that is clear. Nifty Indian markets are obviously outperforming something like US markets a big time. But 
you have to understand where we are in terms of the current cycle. If you were to ask me to predict something or to bet on something, I would tell you that equities for the time being are fine. Momentum traders will continue to make money. But I think in the last quarter of this year, we have to be careful about what happens to equities. They will enter a period where something like this or a prolonged phase of time and price correction will begin. Of course, I will revise this view as the data updates, but for the time being, this is what I can, I can see on the charts. Currently, when you talk about risk reward in the market, it is only in banks, finance, FMCG, consumption, and the sectors that I had covered, IT, which are SIP, STP kind of sectors. I don't expect these sectors to give you a lot of return if you're an investor also. These sectors will only start delivering returns in my view after a period of 12 to even something like 18 months. So if someone does a SIP today, 18, 24 months, don't expect anything from this space also. It's mainly because how S&P 500 is, is uh, you know, structure-wise on the chart currently and how Nifty 500 is. So I expect at least two, three quarters of time price correction that would come starting in the last quarter of this particular year, which would last to something like March, April 2025. And then we would get one more you know, momentum, those kind of uh, phases in the market. In the near term, in the short term, yes, momentum traders need to be in PSC, CPSC, defense, railways, auto. Uh, you know, these sectors are going to perform well. But take into cognizance that cycle-wise, we are due for a time and a price correction that will last between six to eight months at least. So while you can be a momentum trader, do not commit the mistake of committing long-term money in extended spaces. Extended spaces are PSC, CPSC, defense, railways, uh, you know, auto sector, infra sector, manufacturing space. This is a momentum pocket. Participate in it. Make your 30-40%. Get out from that space. But the real medium-term investment opportunity is only going to come once S&P 500, Nifty 500 have a time price correction that lasts for four to six months at least. That is when you can commit a lot of money in, in these spaces for the medium term. In between, the risk-reward space where people are not looking today will at least not lose that much. But 18, 12 to 18 months, I don't expect banks, finance, you know, all the sectors that I explained to, to deliver fantastic bit of returns. So while long term, I'm really bullish on overall equity markets, I think in the last quarter and then the six months after that, markets will head into a lot of problems in terms of time and price correction. There's not going to be a COVID-like correction. It's going to be a time and price correction, of course. So make sure uh, you're following me on Instagram. My ID will come in front of you. Leave me a direct message uh, and I'll certainly look into your query. So I'll, I'll, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great weekend ahead. Take care and be safe.